Se que de lo bajo, se que de lo bajo, olu a mi o ti de o yo se que le. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Ashen Forge. I am Phantom X, joined as always by Diggs and the legendary Neurotoxin. How are y'all doing? Doing good. I think Diggs might have actually froze on us. Am I going to? Oh, yeah, he did. Right at the beginning. There we go. There we go. Yeah, Diggs, we were like saying, wow, if you can't join for this discussion, we're just going to have to like stop and start all over. It's like throw me a curveball. Yeah, show me a curve. <laughs> throw me um, a curve. Uh, right, it's a great when we movie. I've seen it. Um, yeah, so we were just starting. I was just saying that this has been a very interesting weekend on our Discord, the forums, uh, their Discord, Reddit. Like, I feel like the PvP crowd has so far been obviously pleased by what they've seen, and then there's everyone else um, that wonders where this is headed. So. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting. I think I think the obvious place to start here is naval combat because I feel like that's the most questionable part that's that's come out of this. There's a lot of changes, right? Node, map size, map structure. Um, talked about caravans, happiness, which is like a really cool thing I want to talk about. Um, tons of stuff to go over, but I feel like that was definitely the. Uh, if you're on our Discord, I think I think this was public when you did this. I, I became alarm, aware of what was happening. I was at work, so I wasn't watching the live stream. And I think Diggs <laughs> put something in chat as to like, I'm done. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? Naval combat, open seas, I'm done. <laughs> like, wow. So um, we're going to start no, I'm, there. I'm done. Deal, deal breaker. Uh, yeah, deal breaker. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to start this by saying when Kickstarter started, so everything that gets personally, everything that gets discussed here, because I know this is going to turn into a PVP, PVE kind of com conversation. Uh, when I first joined on to this project in Kickstarter, I, I, I was well aware that there would be PVP for me as a crafter PVE player. So I'm, I'm aware of that. I, I am okay with that. I bought into that. Um, so this isn't like, oh my goodness, like I, I was accused on their, 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 discord of something the care bearing some something was, was actually kind of funny because it was a joke and the person didn't realize it was a joke about them but um anyways i want to start with that and then i'm just going to kind of toss it to you digs because i feel like you've been really into the forums because you're you're showing up on cross posts unrelated to the con uh, uh, the topic <laughs> about your <laughs> naval combat yeah um but but you you were you were what what number were you on for the uh ashes kickstarter three number three, three? third backer yeah third backer um and you guys brought that to um you know our awareness on on theory forge um and so we jumped on board fairly quickly after that it's got a lot of stuff that um, I was hoping to see an EQ next. Um, so uh, all I really have to say about Kickstarter is, um, you know, um, so 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 the big thing for me is that um, in the dev stream on Friday, Stephen said that um, there's an important change. Um, the open seas will now auto flag as combatant, and um, there's no corruption. Uh, um, and he's doing that because there are unique opportunities um, for treasure finding and unique NPCs. And where there's uh, more rewards, there should be more risk. Um, and uh, when I think about risk versus reward, it's kind of bizarre because uh, for the Kickstarter, um, I don't know if I would have paid $500 if I had known that there were going to be zones um, where you auto flag as combatant and there's no corruption. Um, oops. That was for um, 
a stretch goal, which is naval combat. Naval combat was a stretch goal. Um, and if I had known that the um, result of having naval combat was going to be zones that uh, auto flag you as combatant, that would have been an interesting risk versus reward because I would have tried to back for like fifty dollars, back the, the the base game, but not pay so much money that we actually meet the naval combat stretch goal. Um, but um, um, yeah, but uh, I don't play games where we auto flag as combatant. Um, and uh, I mean, I really um don't like to play on games with uh i don't like to play on servers with pvpers uh traditionally i have uh started mmorpgs on the pvp optional server and eventually i always rage quit and move to the pve only server um because playing on the same servers as pvpers just never works out very well for me um so uh, I'm a little bit reluctant to play Ashes because there's no PvE only server. But people who play Lineage Two have been saying, "Well, there's a corruption system that's similar to Lineage Two Karma. Um, it should be a very good deterrent for rampant um, PKing, and you probably won't come across it very often. So it should be fine." And I'm like, "Okay." That sounds reasonable. Um, I'm willing to give that a try. Let's see what happens in Alpha 2. Let's see how well this corruption works. Um, and that's where I've been for the last five years. The really interesting thing for me, though, is that um, when we had um, Steven on uh, for the first time, I think, which was May of 2018, within five minutes, I asked him my concerns. Uh, is the game like eve online and is the game like arcade and he said no it's not like those games because those games have zones where you flag for pvp and you know some are more uh pvp than others um and uh, ours only has one flagging system and you have corruption everywhere and i was like okay um but uh now with this change, it's like Eve Online and it's like Arcade. Actually, I specifically chose not to play Arcade because of the naval combat in Arcade, and now the naval combat um, for Ashes seems like it's going to be similar to Arcade. So it's just a deal breaker for me. I'm, I, I don't think I'll be playing with that mechanic. But um, there's no animosity. There's no hard feelings. I'm okay. I've if people like, you know, they have enough people to support that EVE Online gameplay or the Arcade gameplay, I think that's great. Um, it's not for me, so I probably, I mean, you know, with this mechanic, I don't see myself playing. Um, but uh, that's just me. We have to see how many other people feel the same way. Um, you know. Um, I was just saying, you know, last week... We, we talked a little bit about PvP and PvE rating, and that drummed up a lot of discussion on Reddit. It's the most, most interactive post I've ever put on Reddit, and I generally dislike Reddit, but it was actually semi-good conversation. And everyone refers to Lineage 2. Well, this is the successor to Lineage 2. The creators played Lineage 2, and they did. Actually, if you go back to the very first sort of Q&A video they did pre-Kickstarter, they specifically talk about their time on Lineage 2. But what I find interesting is that everyone is comparing this and, you know, we're not supposed to be worried as Care Bears about being uh, ganked because of the corruption system. But it was just super interesting when you dug up that article or that that interview and he's he unprompted, you say, what is the murder box games? He unprompted, he says, Lineage 2, <laughs> um, to a degree. He, he doesn't fully say it's always a murder box, but that is the game that came to his mind when you asked him that question. Um, mm -hmm. So I just, I, it's just an interesting connection of what people are, are expecting now to what he had said back then. Um, yeah, and he said that, um, you know, we have a karma system similar to mm -hmm. Lineage 2, but... It's even harsher than Lineage 2, so he's, he thinks it's not going to be a problem, as much of a problem uh, as we see. 
in lineage too. No, I, I want to hear your Maybe opinion so. too, but I, I, I feel like the positive here, I always want to look for positives. I mean, I'm, I'm a lifetime sub, so I'm, I'm, I want this game to succeed. You know, it's not all C's. It's, it's, there are, there's going to be a, a, a good defined area where we can go hopefully treasure hunting and we can do some deliveries and caravanning and hopefully, um, you know, have some fun. It is a little disappointing that really to go all the way out in the open seas becomes a risk that I wasn't expecting to take. Um, I understand, I, I guess what I don't, I understand the PVP in the open seas. I don't understand the no corruption, why that differs from what's done on land. I don't understand the reasoning there. Well, and the big problem I have with that is he's saying um, the reason is because uh, there's, unique NPCs and there's unique treasure finding. And if you want to do that, there's extra rewards. There's yeah. extra rewards that you're going to want to get. And that means if you want to get those nice, shiny rewards, you know, you're going to have to be willing to PVP. I also disagree with him on the idea that you don't, that in order to feel happy, prideful about your accomplishments, to feel like you accomplished something, I disagree that you have to have some enormous risk in order to to have an accomplishment. I don't I don't think that's how that is. Certainly, you might feel a certain way if it was more risk and reward, but I don't think they're needed. I guess what um, what confuses me, or not confuses me, but what I get frustrated by most is it does seem like you know, and you go back to it. Really starts with corruption being able to be removed by friends and and ways to get around it now, presumably. And what's most frustrating, I put this in chat, is that it's open world PvP is not necessary for world change. And when you go back and you listen to their Kickstarter video, they talk about world change. They talk about um, the fact that conflict and PvP is needed as a me as the mechanic for ch um, for change. Or, um, and I get that, and that's true. But you know, when you listen to their Kickstarter, they specifically mention castle system. Sieges against nodes, caravan system, battlegrounds, and guild wars. Those are the those are the mechanisms for change, and none of that has to be open world PvP or or non corrupted uh, naval mm -hmm. combat. So I call it free for all PvP, free for all PvP, because there's no corruption there. Um, but yeah, Nero. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't see all doom and gloom in it. Personally, I don't mind it. And the reason I don't mind it is because it's not all of the areas that can be accessed by boats. It is only the open seas, the stuff that, you know, in modern political terms we would call international waters that was even the word they used on the show um that's fair um i could see it just as much being for you know a place to go and hunt treasure and hunt creatures as maybe to do some sort of illicit things that would normally draw attention if you do them on land and, you know, you don't really only ever able to do something like that out there. Otherwise, you'll be interrupted somehow or whatever. Maybe quests appear and people get sent as bounty hunters or something. But on the open seas, the rules are different. Um, you know, that could be part of it. Uh, but, you know, the open sea is something that you're warned about. You don't just accidentally fall into it you get a warning i'm guessing some combination of like a range and a timer maybe there's even like a little shimmering wall along the border edge to let you know you know okay don't cross this line uh or if you do you have a few seconds to back it up and around um that's um that's the reason why i don't really mind it if you're going out there, if you're going out beyond that threshold intentionally, you're either doing it with all iron sides and a sturdy crew of swatch bucklers, or you're going out there with the fastest damn thing made of balsa wood and, you know, spit glue and whatever 
that's going to go as fast as possible to escape everything. Escape the PVPers, escape the Krakens and Leviathans and Ocean Ogres and everything that might pursue you if you go headlong into it. Um, escape bad weather conditions. You know, that might be part of getting from point A to point B is that there's just going to be bad weather along the way and being able to navigate around it kind of important. Uh, I, I think that's going to be one of the things that you know, we're really going to see a difference with that. There's going to be people going out specifically for transport, uh, especially guilds that will focus on transport. They're going to have docks in the uh, the northern areas and the southern areas. So that way they can kind of have the mid bases where they, um, you know, can can do their trade routes and exchange and go back and forth. Uh, a little more safely and in doing so ensure that people who do business with them will be able to get their goods and services across. Um, hopefully setting themselves up in one of those like, you know, everybody goes through us. So we're neutral, you know, we'll help everybody and their enemies because everybody is everyone's enemy or something. And, and, and playing that sort of card as a way to, uh, reduce their their liability and increase their their business and in doing so yeah if you want to get across you just go to um you know that shipping company and you you buy a ticket and you get on a ship and you know there's a 99.9 percent .9 chance it's going to get across and on that point uh oh one percent well either there's a contract involved or hopefully you uh we're able to get on a lifeboat or something. <laughs> um, but I I think the other thing is there's additional ways to get across the continent. Should getting across the continents be something someone needs to do in any amount of regularity? Um, I would imagine maybe if there's rare materials that only one continent has or the other continent has and you're trying to ship those back and forth for trade. OK, you know, but that's a business. Businesses have risks, and this is going to ensure that there's a risk, not just the monsters that you might be able to avoid, but, um, you know, players that might be looking to go after because they know that you deal in a certain sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, so, so, go ahead. So the difference is, though, that I am a Care Bear casual challenge, hardcore time player. And I don't know exactly how you categorize yourself, but I, I'm not going to play Planet Side 2. I'm not going to play an MMO FPS because I don't like PvP. And as you know, I barely even like combat. When we're playing D&D, &D, I have to remember to let other people do combat because I'm going to try to charisma and stealth our way out of combat. Um I'm going to try to avoid combat, and I'm not in an MMORPG wanting to be flagged as combat, and I don't want people looking at me thinking if you come across me, yeah, I get to hit on you. I mean, with no repercussions. So the compromise for me for Ashes is if you kill me when I didn't fight back, you get corruption. Um, so without that, I'm not really... Um, up for that um and i think it's a i think it's a great addition for people who like pvp um and again for people who enjoy maybe an mmo fps i think it's great for people who like eve online i think it's great for people who love the naval combat in arcades sea of thieves it's just yeah well yeah people have been mentioning sea of thieves um you don't play see what it's okay when you play sea of thieves i'm like i didn't play sea of thieves um <laughs> those are games that i don't play um and that just makes it a uh, ashes one more game that i won't play it's not like i have any animosity or i'm not going to support the game in terms of testing or anything like that it, it's just not a play style that i mean it's not a, it's not a gameplay that fits my play style so it's a deal breaker for me. I didn't start petitions saying they need to change it. I didn't start a poll saying how many people agree with me. I, it's a deal breaker 
for me. <laughs> um, and people on the forums are flipping out. You're throwing a tantrum. I'm like, I, I, I'm just not going to play. I didn't, yeah. Someone said I'm like hmm. holding uh the devs hostage and i'm like i didn't say i'm not doing the podcast until they change it i didn't say i'm leaving the forums unless they change it like i it just that's not the gameplay that fits my place and we also don't know how much of an impact like the waters are hypothetically pretty damn open i don't know how much chance there is that you're even going to run into other players you know, short of like near the ports or um, near points of interest that you might want to avoid instead of going to. Um, I, I, you know, there are going to be other ways to get across uh, airships and transports and other sorts of things. I don't know how far the coastal versus open water distance is going to be. When you look across the upper arc, for example, where it goes from the upper part of uh, Vandegar to Illyrium through, unfortunately, the map version I have does not have good enough resolution to get that little uh, green island in the middle top there. But, um, you know, I would imagine that's going to probably be a... Uh, a regular sort of transport area. And another thing I would imagine there's just going to be so much uh, transit uh, going on and people trying to not get ganked that um, there will be people who know who they can trust and rely on and roll with, and they'll ship out three, five, six at a time. So instead of getting ganked by one bigger ship, a bigger ship will see them and say, Oh, no, let's just, you know, stay away. We're not going to, you know, they will swarm us and take us down because we are but one ship. You know, that that's that's the sort of thing I would imagine we're going to see some um, some emphasis on in how things set up and organize and arrange in the actual economics of gameplay. It might shake out in such a way that a care bear like you will be able to access the content, you know, relatively safely. Or it might shake out that the server is absolute belligerent violence everywhere, in which case I would imagine you would go to a different server. Um, no, I, probably, if I'm going to be auto if I'm going to be auto flagged as combatant, I'm not going to any server. I'm not going to play on a server where I go places and I'm auto flagged as combatant. Would you uh, wait a year or some amount of time for the communities to sort of settle and and congeal into, you know, their different patterns before picking a server? No, because one of the things that I absolutely hate on PvP optional servers is when I've spent some time uh, as a combatant because I wanted to defend a town and then I go out of my way to go to a secure place where nobody is. So I can wait for the timer to cool down and somebody finds me and wants to wants to battle. And I'm like, nope, I'm done. I'm not in the mood anymore. Please leave me alone. I just want to gather. I'm just exploring. I'm minding my own business. And they kill me anyway. That causes me to rage quit. That server especially. And what they say is, well, why are you flagged? Why are you flagged if you don't want to do PvP? You're flagged. And it's like, yeah, I'm waiting for the cool down. So, no, I'm not playing on a server where I can be auto flagged <laughs> as a combatant because most likely I'm not going to be in the mood. And when somebody tells me, but you're flagged, why are you in an area where you're flagged as a combatant? No, I'm just not going to play on that server. <laughs> so it's not a matter of um, just avoiding the uh, the open sea content when you don't want to potentially get into PvP, you just don't want to play on the server or in the game in general. If there's any area, even if it's not an area that you're interested in the content for, just on the premise that there is an area that auto flags. Because uh, my Bartle score, I'm at 87% explorer. That's what I like doing the most. So I'm going to want to explore the entire map. And when I'm exploring and just all I want to do is just 
explore the area. It's not even about what kind of content I'm going to be picking up in terms of resources or whatever. I I want to be able to explore any area of the map without being auto flagged as combatant. That's just not okay for my play style. So you you wouldn't even compromise and just hitch a ride wearing rags and just no, be the, like no, be a the, storyteller on on the boat. No, 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 no. That was even worse. And, you know, <laughs> cor- corruption is the compromise. So if there's no corruption and I'm auto flagged, no, that's that's a deal breaker. I'm not so, I'm I'm not going to be on that server. So I've kind of put this in chat. You know, when it comes to the PVX, I, I just worry about getting further and further away of a, from a balance of PVP and PVE and what that will mean. I, I again, am a, I'm a lifetime sub already, um, so I have no skin in the game as to whether I pay more, do I do, I do a subscription or not. I've already put my money in. I'm, I'm happy I did. I feel like I've already gotten a lot out of it anyways, just in the fun we've been able to have, the testing that we've been able to do. So it's not for me so much of a you know, oh, my, my dreams are fate. You know, I'm never going to play this. I, I'm acceptant. I'm accepting of PVP. I, that was, I understood that from the beginning, but I agree with what everyone in chat's kind of saying that this seems to be getting further and further away from the original vision. And where, where that's concerning, I guess, to me is just what that means for the lifetime health of the game. Um, I don't know, you know, we always had a running joke that Stephen initially, early when we interviewed him, always said yes. He said yes to everything. Like they wanted everyone, they wanted to, to, to do everything. And a quote that he said really stuck out is, he said, not everybody is excited about PVP, but as I've always said, Ashes of Creation is not meant to be the game for everyone. That that kind of really stuck in my brain. I feel like they've maybe finally just made a decision of what direction they want to go, even if it's niche. Um, and that's that does, you know, you can look at things in the past. I had posted a short on YouTube of an interview he did very early on, and they're talking about PVE. And he specifically says, if you don't have a strong, solid PVE focus as a game, then there's not much meaning to whatever PVP is going to provide. And so to see things switching, you know, that was his own quote. And to see things kind of moving further away, I just worry about long-term health because I'm convinced for nodes to work, for these things to work, for it to feel like a living world, you need PVP, PVE, you need crafters, you need all these people. And so when that balance starts to seem disrupted, that's that's just where I get concerned as to how stagnant do things get. Do, do even the PVPers eventually just get bored because the world isn't really changing because because we don't have the, the people needed completely for that to happen. This could all just be made up concern in my head that doesn't ever have, doesn't have validity, doesn't come to fruition. But that's where I, I, I don't mind the PVP. I've accepted that. I just worry about how these sorts of things change the long term. Um, no, I, I don't. I, I will probably still go out in the open seas. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a fisher um, when I'm not being a farmer. So, you know, well, hell yeah. If there's things that I can only catch in that area, then I'm going to I'm going to try to find the least traveled spot I can so that no one sees me. And I'm going to go light. I'm going to go with a pole and some bait and some rags and try to come home with something. And if I don't, that's OK. Um, I just I just. You know, the more and more these decisions pile up, you just start to wonder about just the the balance that that really I feel like needs to exist. Um, I would imagine at some point there will be a form of compromise that maybe certain sorts of ships are only allowed to be used for. Um, personal transportation they have no cannons they're not able to engage in combat but they are you know the 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 caribbean express basically they they still retain the normal corruption rules and it's not that you can't you know blow up that um that bus at sea essentially but you know, do you really want to have a reputation for blowing up buses at sea? And oh yeah, you will get the corruption for it, and that will follow you. 
Yeah, um, um, Phantom is typing in chat PVE server, server and or server with areas of defined PVP. And yeah, so, you know, we're not supposed to have different rule sets and, and uh, it's supposed to be all the same. And so there's not going to be a technically PVE only server and that's fine. But yeah, if they made a server where uh, corruption is on the open seas, I would play on that server. Um, but I'm not going to play on a server where I'm exploring the map and I'm auto flagged somewhere. And especially that's, it's funny because on the EQ next, um, forums, uh, the quickest way to, for, for someone to get a temporary ban was for us to discuss how PVPers and how PVEers are all going to stay on the same server. So we were trying to throw out suggestions and the PVPers would throw out a suggestion and the PVEers would flip their lids and say, that's offensive. How dare you say that? And people would be getting banned and the opposite would happen. PVEers would say, well, I think we should just do this. And the PVPers would be, hell no. How, how could you even suggest that? I'm not going to go along with that. Um, and people would get banned. Um, and one of the suggestions was one of these things where they're saying, hey, yeah, we're going to have these nice, unique things in this uh, this uh, zone. And, you know, if you come in, yeah, we're going to kill you because, you know, if you don't want us to kill you, don't come in. And the PV users are saying, yeah, but there's stuff I want to look at. I just want to go in and explore. Maybe I can just be a diplomat and I can go in and I'm immune from PV." in this area and the pvpers were like oh no you can't come into a pvp zone and be immune to pvp um so i think part of it is just that disconnect of steven is a pvpeer he loves lineage 2 he loves arcade he probably really enjoyed eve online and so he's making the game that he likes to play and he's spending the money he should get to do that it's just those are not the games that I play. I don't. I don't play on servers that have that rule set. So, here's um, something they need to clarify: Is it boats only? Because I'm wondering, maybe for the deep sea fishing stuff, what you'd be doing, uh, Phantom X, is going out on your. You get your boat near the danger zone. And then you deploy out on your sea turtle buddy with like a barrel of supplies and and get it out in position, standing on your buddy or sitting on the barrel and just fishing out there. You take your catch, you bring it back. You know, no big deal. Or it could be if you want to explore digs. Yeah, you know, you you make sure you've got enough uh, food for your sea turtle or whatever uh um disco dolphin whatever it is that you'd be riding whatever uh you know stufferton walrus stufferton walrus you would totally ride the hell out of that mm -hmm. um but you know whatever it is that you'd have if you're not flagging just going you know in that state enemies might still attack you enemies should still attack you and obviously if you see a kraken off in the distance and you hear it rumbling and you see some you know, whirlpool forming off in the distance, you go the other way because that's on you if you go into that. But um, that's something they need to clarify. Is it ships or is it all crossing of that threshold and waiting out the timer on the other side that auto flags? that would probably make a huge difference because that would still allow explorers to go and check stuff out. And while it's going to be more laborious to swim out to a location than to boat there, for example, uh, what you're trading in, um, how long it's going to take to get there is the convenience of not being a PvP target unless somebody in an entire ship is going to blow up one dude for whatever meager scraps he's carrying and all flag red. You know, I don't <laughs> I don't see that one happening as much. So, you know, that's that's what I'm kind of thinking uh, uh, they should clarify or consider for 
their sort of solution for this. Yeah, and I mean that 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 would be a compromise. I think uh, if if I could, if I had to um, never get on a ship and instead just uh, go on a um, aquatic mount, um, and it's slow going, I don't mind how slow it is. I'll take the time to go slow, but uh, if that leaves me as green. Um, and people know not to attack me because I'm on a aquatic mount instead of on a ship. I'd go. I would go for that. Um, oh, they might not even spot you until you're close by. Uh, you know, just think about a, a a turtle and a dude on it, just out in the middle of open seas, especially where it's foggy or if it's dark or something. I don't think you'd be fishing out in the dark like that. But, you know, just in real life, big old boat that's hard to steer comes crashing through, smashes some little boat or, you know, hits something because just didn't see it. Or when it did see it, it didn't have enough time to steer around. I I don't know if that that's actually going to be a sort of thing, because I think everything's going to be too magical to have that low a um, steering speed. Mm-hmm. Also, respawn. Curious. I think you're supposed to respawn at your closest, like respawn point. Like, where is that if you're in the middle of the ocean? Uh, one bonus for corrupt. I think corrupt players respawn randomly. So now at least you're not going to just respawn randomly in the ocean somewhere and constantly fail your way to land. Um, yeah, that was a fa- fascinating question. Is uh, where do you respawn? Do you respawn? wherever the boat is or do you respond? Well, somebody asked something, no, this wasn't death. This was if you log out, if you log out while you're on a ship, when you come back in, where do you appear? Is it at the nearest respawn point or is it on the ship, wherever the ship happens to have ended up? Um, What I heard was in arc age, you, it's whatever the last coordinates you were at. So, if the ship wasn't there anymore, you'd be in the water. Um, but that's a really kind of fascinating answer. Like, where, you know, can you use that to kind of have a fast travel? Um, and I don't think you're going to get very far with the fast travel. At best, you would end up on the shore, I would think, um, somewhere, but not like in a city or town or something like that. So. Teridan saying, yeah, that's how it worked in Arc Age. Be interesting to see how trade routes work in all of this, since you can't, you know, using other means to to travel, you can't bring goods with you. So I'm curious, you know, he mentioned adding the islands. The purpose for that is sort of a a trading purpose. So I wonder wonder how much deep sea you will actually travel through through a water caravan. Yeah, Nero, did you get that there are flight paths? Did you get that? Uh, um, he, said a, he said about airships and uh, teleport yeah. for vessels and, and stuff like that. So, but it sounds like those aren't things that are going to be available on day one and instead are yeah. things that you're going to have to build up. Uh, yeah. I wonder with the um, airships and stuff, if it's only going to work when there's more than one um, airship location. Otherwise, what ends up happening, you know, what you go to a location and then uh, deploy out with a parachute like that. (laughs) That doesn't that that sounds less magical. Uh, I don't think they're going to do that one. Um, So I would imagine there's there's going to be something, but it's going to probably require. And, you know, that could be part of the uh, story of the game or whatever, is that you know, one of the major world quests is setting up the um, the neutral airship system. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, it I'm seems laughing. really weird to have a mechanic where you have to empty all your pockets before you get on the Zeppelin. You know, le- nope, you got to leave all that stuff on that side of the, you know, on that side of the sea. Now, even New World, it just costs you- more money, right? In New World, the more you add, the more it costs to travel. 
you could still use it, but it just, you had to spend oh. more. I'm just laughing. Cause I'm thinking as a crafter, like forget the dragon teeth up on the hill behind me being hard. I'm still waiting for that special metal from the other continent across the ocean. That doesn't ever come. Cause it's always downed out in the open seas. Mm-hmm. Like that's where your rarity is going to start to come. Oh, damn it. Okay. This is so dumb. I hate this. And you're going to hear it. And I don't know how you're going to feel. Um, the way you get the nice fancy metals across and materials across from the other continent is you make items like full complete pieces of equipment that you then salvage even if you're losing you know 50 75 percent of the material in the process it's a guaranteed way you're going to get it across because you're not going to lose actual equipable items so then it's that that would then create a very interesting situation where Hmm. it's not about um you know you actually the even better part about that is if you're feeding crafters that you know in the area like your 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 guild crafters or whatever those materials to make the items with they're also getting their skill up as part of this so you're not only doing the skill grind part for them but then you're taking the fodder from the skill grind and shipping it back so you can break it down for the the fancy material on the other side yes commodity laundering that's exactly right <laughs> that's how it worked in arc age that's hilarious or was that about something else uh, yeah and I wonder about and somebody was wondering about um, under realm tunnels. Like, would there be any tunnels that you can take to uh, go under the sea and over to the um, other uh, continents or islands? Um, I, I would hope so. I th- the, it almost sounds like that might be the case, but we'll have to see. I'd love to see um, that. I guess but, I can, uh, um, let's just pop the map video up while we're talking about the map. There we go. Yeah, because I was going to talk about the, I was going to say the caravans. Uh, they mentioned that um, you can take those to choke points in the above, above ground choke points on the map and move your caravans down um, into the under realm and move your stuff around. It sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, so it was one of the ways or... It was interesting they were talking about how you do the uh, transport with the caravans that you a caravan always comes from and goes to a node with a caravansary. Mm -hmm. So if you use a port to to barge it from point A to point B to ferry it across, you aren't delivering it at those docks unless those docks are in a node that also has a caravansary because then you'll be entering that caravansary deploy safe zone exit radius. So it kind of adds an extra layer to that. Otherwise, when you get across, you're going to be back in the on land version and, you know, going to your next uh, location that you're trying to get to. Um, That is different than the merchant ship. The merchant ship is the uh, caravan at sea. Functions in a very similar way. The difference is it leaves from a port. It's received at a port. And it does not have an option to go on land. You're just going water to water. Yeah, and so so I didn't quite um, get all of the concept of how we are driving them, uh, and I'm thinking of mayoral and quest-driven caravans, not personal caravans. I kind of imagine that personal caravans we can take anywhere off-road, anywhere we want. I mean, we might have some issues with terrain, but you know, that, that, that's our responsibility. Um, but the mayoral ones, I would think they would still need to kind of be on a road. Um, I think it still comes down to the driver you hire commission. 
Mm, and do you think uh, we? So do, do are we able to get on the caravan and uh, maneuver it, or are we just escorting the caravan? I believe the player who is the I believe a player is actually the driver. Because you have to cap. You have to. Well, you have to. Do you cap, Maybe cap I'm mistaken. No, I'm not. But sure. he, they, 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 they describe that you can change your destination midway through. That instead of going along the one long route, if there's a stop over here that you'd rather go to because things are getting dangerous or there's a storm ahead or whatever, um, that you have the option to do that. Now you're right, though. That does leave the question: Are you basically? The captain of the caravan, whoever is that, who whoever is commissioned for that, tells the driver NPC, "Hey, go that way instead," or draws on the map the new uh, path, or if it's something that's actually piloted by a player. Um, and so, that's also another good question. If the ones that are commissioned and done by players have different rules than the uh, more official ones like the mayoral one that's going to the um, the the kingdom or you know whoever's the biggest node in charge or or the authority in the area and you're making that delivery maybe that one always goes the um, the straightest quickest path and that's why it's such a uh, a big deal because it's easy pickings if you don't send extra resources and people at it to uh, keep it protected i really loved the way they described um uh where the caravan is going to appear um so that it's not just that um any bandit can be like oh it's coming from this town so i know they're going to have to come out of this gate and i'm just going to wait at the gate um or i'm just going to wait along this road and i know that it's going to take this route. I kind of like that we have, it seems like a radius of uh, where it can just, you know, start setting up. Yeah, where it gets assembled. Yeah. Another thing that I was super interested in, and I kind of talked about this right at the beginning. Well, we before I move on to that, is there any more you want to talk about with regards to, I'm afraid to ask any of, any of the caravan, the map. Um, we didn't really actually talk much about the well, map. Well, the, the map, like one of the things that I love about the map, and it's kind of one of the things that kind of bugged me initially about um, flagging combatant on the open seas is um, I love the name Sujuma for um, one of the islands. So one of the things that I really like about this map is that the names don't all sound like they are um european um or you know even like dwarven like sujuma kind of sounds asian to me uh, maybe it's polynesian i don't know um so um uh vandegar is a great name there's another one that, that i liked draca draca something but uh, yeah, I'm liking the names. I definitely want to go to Sujima and see what uh, culture is like there. I'm curious too. So, Old. Yeah, it looks like it. There's mountain, mm -hmm. mountains everywhere, mm -hmm. I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, I was curious. So 1,200 square kilometers, right? That's what he has. That's what they said. So I, I actually looked. I was like, okay, well, I'm curious about other games and their map sizes. Like, where does this shape up? um some of it was surprising so keeping in mind 1200 so world of warcraft pre-burning crusade so this was a while back was 207 square kilometers mm. um to to give some idea on on sort of the other end of that um lord of the rings online is apparently 77,000 kilometers square kilometers um so 12,000 actually seems Pretty pretty good compared to some BDO is about four hundred. Arcage was six hundred. Vanguard was just under three hundred. So we'll have a lot now. The thing that he did point out too is that how much of it was ocean versus land. 
uh, like 700 and something versus 400 and something, I think. Um, I didn't quite catch that, unfortunately. Did you have it in your notes? Yeah, I have it somewhere. I can find it. Um, Cause a lot of the 1200 is, is mostly C. Um, gosh, where's this? Okay, here it is. Uh, roughly 750 square kilometers of space is ocean and lakes. And about 450 to 480 square kilometers is uh, land play, which um, I guess starts to fit in more with some of the, the traditional MMORPGs that are largely land-based and not ocean. Which actually, now that I say that, I'm a little less like, wow, 1,200 square kilometers. Like, oh, wait, the land, the land component's actually about the same as others. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, we did get a glimpse of the Riverlands. Is that right? Um, and mm -hmm. I liked what I saw. Um, it was pretty good. I will say, so I'm just going to jump ahead real quick because um, one of the things that happened is they showed the Veiloon. They showed the Veil. Well, they showed I loved the appearance of the Nakua, mostly because they looked very Polynesian and yeah. kind of had shapes that I don't normally see in fantasy settings, especially for representatives of dwarves or halflings. So I think that was awesome. Um, but in the forum, someone asked, um, uh, is anyone else liking the um, the update to the Veiloon? And I was like, eh, meh. And people were like, oh, Diggs is throwing a tan because he hates the new PvP flagging. It's like, no, I just said meh. How is meh throwing a tantrum? <laughs> it's just, uh, they look like characters I might see in a fantasy setting. The guy kind of looks like Jafar. Like, I've seen that. It's what I expect a human to be able to look like it with Unreal Engine 5. I mean, it's okay. It just wasn't like hey. anything that was super exciting but also uh steven mentioned how when the veiloon step through the portals you're gonna see these essence like fissures in the skin um and i was like that sounds like really interesting i want to show me that um so just in comparison to the changes that they could make like the changes that they made with the vec or the changes that they made to the pyre i mean it's okay, but it wasn't like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited now to play a European or Persian looking guy. I mean, like it's it's okay. But I I think this comes down to uh we need to see those fissures and those magical components and how they're expressed because right now it comes back to exactly where the Kalar and Veilun were at before they started reworking them, which is we have humans and other humans, and where do we draw the line between which which race of human gets which grouping of human, you know, real world human analogous people? So as far as I'm concerned, the Veiloon that we saw are just Kalar. And yeah. they're 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 no different. That's until we point. see yeah, until we see those magical expressions, and those magical expressions have to be like the difference be similar to, to what we see with the other races where, you know, the Nikua and the Dunir, I actually don't think are that far apart from each other compared to the Vec and the Renkai or the Pyre. And, you know, so that that's the thing that I'm waiting for is, all right, so we've, we've seen we've seen the whole humans and also humans part. Show me the cool thing. Show me what makes them different. Yeah. That's kind of what I was, when they said, oh, we're going to give you an update of the Valen. I was kind of expecting. Yeah, it. me too. Yeah. Um, so it was okay, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the art, the art's good. They look good. Yeah. Every, but all the characters they've been making have yeah. been looking good. Like, it's not, not saying like, oh, they only make is good stuff. It's like some sort of dig. Like, no, all they make is good stuff. It's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. But I think, you know, this is still leaving us kind of questioning, well, you've said this, but, 
you know, we're, we're still seeing stuff that's just in the range of normal human with those faces. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with all the variety we can now do with, uh, the unreal five, uh, creator. Um, yeah, we do need to see, okay, what exactly is limiting us with what's the limits between what we can do with the Kalar, you know, it's only these five real world races for the Kalar and only these five real world races. We, you know, are there limiters to that? Um, but no, it appears to be that the difference is going to be these essence like, uh, ruptures that we see in the skin, which, you know, should be cool to see once, you know, they get around yeah. to that. What was the other thing we're going to be seeing the, um, we're supposed to be seeing, um, getting back to the maps. We're supposed to be seeing the under realm map in a future live stream. And I am curious to see what the under realm map looks like. So we're getting close to our time and we got so much stuff we did not talk about, but I want to end on a, happy note and that's talking about happiness i did not know that this was going to be a component to npcs um had they ever said anything before this i can't rem i feel like i would have remembered it no because this is the closest thing to story bricks that we've heard um right npcs have i don't know i go that form far of, but no no no. i'm saying i'm it's the closest i didn't say it's oh exactly <laughs> or even you know this is just like i'm just saying we you know story bricks was supposed to have some type of emotion and we haven't heard anything about the ai in ashes having any type of emotion so happiness is a surprise because i feel like there were two positives that 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 when you talk community and npc and two positives that are going to need to keep whoever the mayor is straight as or you know as as clean as they can i'm sure there'll be some terrible mayors and some corrupt mayors but one of them was yeah maintaining the happiness of your npcs and that things do start to get limited he even said they could start to revolt uh you might turn off certain npcs they decide to go on strike um so if you run things so crappy you could just really lose out on a lot of very important um, parts of your of your city. Um, but he also commented on that you might have to mar implement martial law um, because of happiness and some other things that come up. So I feel like that was that was super fun to see. I'm also curious how you can manipulate that. Um, can I go in and somehow make your town's NPCs unhappy? Is that another form of indirect PVP? The other thing that I'll just also real quickly mention that I felt like was good to hear um, was the fact that guilds and specific people will not have direct access to taxation monies, that, that it's just in a pot that they get to pull from when they're ordering things. I, I think that's also pretty positive. So. Well, the thing, I have to go back to li and listen to that section because I was thinking uh, I was working, so I was kind of in and out a little bit of the, um, I didn't even realize I missed that part. Um, I was thinking the martial law was referring to uh, player character react reactions, but um, with NPCs having happiness and being able to start a revolt, I mean, one of the things that I think is um, uh, very exciting about uh, having a dynamic world for ashes is, you know, you can go away for a month or two. You know, we, we, we talk all the time about there's no reason nobody talks to each other in MMORPGs anymore, but there's no reason to talk to anybody because it's a static game. Everybody's doing the same quests. You're all doing the same stuff. Why do I need to talk to anybody? I, we're, I already know what you're doing. Um, so half the, the chat's full of jerks anyway. So like, what do you even want to talk to them? Well, but so for Ashes, if I've been gone for a month and I come back, I'm going to be like, what happened to that city? There used to be a city there. And this is cool. People are going to say, well, you know, that guy stole all the taxes or that guy didn't spend the taxes the way the NPCs wanted. So they they kicked him out. Uh, you know, <laughs> build a <laughs> church for them. the wrong God and got smited by a meteor. Yeah. I thought there used to be a thing over there. And what happened to that? And, you know, well, the NPCs weren't happy. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Jim the Bowmaker is the uh, sign of the times. He's yeah. he's where the good stuff's at, and if he's not there, better get the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah, so that could be really interesting. What and especially with Phantom X's um, uh, penchant for fucking shit up. Um, you know, how can the mayor affect happiness, and then what can we as individuals do to? affect people's happiness well because i think very interesting yeah i think back to like what were my plans as a count in chronicles of Illyria, right so so i i I think of two things one is new world and kind of how there's really no reason for guilds not to do things good for the people that come in now to their areas right there's really no incentive like this the other was just the thought of uh, you know, in Chronicles of Valyria, I, I was I, I was very open in saying I was going to be a terrible count. I, I was going to sell myself or my alts land for cheap that no one could come back and take. And that's just how it was going to be. And um, I fully expected to be removed at some point. But I was going to take uh, that was the role play that I was going to take um, mm-hmm. in this in this instance. Um, it sounds like that just, you know, will in in this instance lead to some pretty bad outcomes for the node in general um my curiosity is i I don't know if they've said this if somebody just really does a terrible job uh, or say someone gets elected mayor and they get sick or they go on vacation for two weeks can you vote out the mayor like if they're not if there's not doing anything is there is there a period of time or should there be where if the mayor does not log in similar to if you don't use your land for like six months you quit the game like does well, there's definitely a time limit of four weeks. Yeah, but you know, is there if you if you get elected today and tomorrow you begin this period of not logging in for two weeks, like do you get auto removed? Does does is there a new or is it just a regimented schedule that only every four weeks is there a vote? Yeah, we'll have to see. So far it seems like it's just every four weeks, but we'll have to see what happens. Maybe that's something that can be tested in um, Alpha 2. Um, we'll see. Um, I did want to say really quickly, what was the thing that I wanted to say? Oh, because you were saying uh, you wanted to end on a positive. I'm not saying that this new change to PvP is not a positive. I'm just saying it's not a gameplay mechanic that, well, I, will, that I will play. That's, I, I'm not saying. It's I not also a I also agree with Grumpy Guy that this potentially does make things a little easier on land if, you know, the the people that were yeah, going to be roaming, um, are going to be more interested in piracy. But <clears throat> but I'm, I'm fine with the PvP on land. I, I'm fine with just letting people kill me and giving them corruption. That's I, I don't have a problem at all with that. All right. Well, anything else? Um, uh, not today. I think that's it for me. That's probably enough for this episode. <laughs> Next week, we're going to talk about skull beards. Oh, yeah. Yes, I didn't even yes. think of that. Holy cow. Holy Next cow. week. Next week. That This is going to be like another big discussion, folks, because what in the actual hell? <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a medical professional here. We've mm-hmm. got you know, there's 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 words to be had, inquisitive words about the subject. I hope you magic. uh tune in for that one. Magic, magic, magic. I was I was actually just about to put that in the chat. Yeah, do so, it. Because yep. magic. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be back in a week. I mean, really, this last live stream, I think we have like five weeks worth of crap to go through. Um, so it's going to be good time. So everyone have a great week, and we will see you here next Sunday. Hey, everybody.